It has been a minute and I've been watching a lot of stuff. So I am very excited about this because it's been a while since I've recorded one of these videos and it's just because I haven't really, I don't know, been motivated to record one of these videos, but something that I'm watching right now has got me very excited. So let's just go through the list. Let's see what I have here. Um, let me pull up my list of all the stuff that I've watched. Obviously, I'm not going to cover every single thing I've watched since the last time I did one of these because it's been months, you guys. But uh, let's see here. I'm just going to start kind of at the bottom and work my way up, I guess. Um, I'm definitely um, getting older. And because of that, my tastes are not necessarily changing, but tweaking, evolving. I don't know. Um, I still like all the same stuff that I've always liked, but I'm, I guess, willing to try more things um, than I used to, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, I've always stated that I have found comfort in watching PBS and shows that come on PBS. But lately, um, um, I've been watching a lot of This Old House, <laughs> probably because I live in an old house and it's very educational for, as a homeowner who lives in an old house. Um, been watching a lot of that actually on Pluto. If I can catch an episode on PBS, I will, but I've been watching that mostly on Pluto. Now, something I watched, I guess it was like maybe a month or two ago um, on the app called Freebie. It, there are too many apps out there. I just want to just say that too many apps out there but anyway um I got freebie just because I heard about this show that was coming out I am not a big reality tv person I'm even less of a competition person but this particular reality competition <laughs> interested me and it was um ATK the next generation so the America's Test Kitchen had a competition show on the freebie app where they're trying to find their next host um, for America's Test Kitchen. And it was um, it was really good. I think the reason why I could tolerate a show like that versus other shows is because it wasn't all about drama. Anytime the main focus of the show is drama, I'm just not interested. Like I can't watch those shows where you have people yelling at people and you know, all of these like ridiculously high stakes that just aren't realistic, it just doesn't appeal to me. It's fine if it appeals to you, it just doesn't appeal to me. But this show was um, a pretty, pretty like friendly competition, but it was an actual competition. You had to be able to do the things that they asked. And um, it got down to um, these three people who I was like, I would be happy if either one of them won, you know, like that's, and I feel like that's that for me, that's what makes a good competition show is when you get to the end and you're not like, oh, I hate that person. I hope they lose. I was rooting for literally all three of them. So that was fun. Um, I downloaded the Tubi app. And the reason why, um, this is before their whole, um, I think they were the ones who had like, the whole rabbit hole um, commercial for a Super Bowl. And so I did it because there is a show that I used to watch with my dog when it would rain and it would, she would, we would put it on and it would like soothe her and calm her down and scoured, you know, the internets <laughs> to figure out where this show was. And Tubi was the only place that had Sarah and Duck. So I have been watching Sarah and Duck, not like, like regularly, but whenever she gets upset or something like that, I'll put that on for her. So we now have the Tubi app. Um, so some things that I watched on, um, Prime recently, um, I was excited because this was originally, I believe a movie that was released for the Paramount Plus app, but I guess, you know, things are constantly shifting back and forth between these streaming things. So, um, the movie, the live action movie for Clifford, the Big Red Dog, I believe started on there, but it was briefly on Prime. So I don't know if it's still on Prime, but it, that's where I watched it. And I got to say, I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> I love Clifford the R Big Red Dog. And I just thought that movie was really more silly than it needed to be. 
Um, it was cute. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they had a giant puppy. And, you know, I mean, it was it was cute, but I don't know. I just I realized that my personal tastes are so contrary to what like popular opinion is that I just can't like take popular opinion into consideration like ever. I just have to see something for myself. People absolutely hated the Tom and Jerry movie that came out recently and I thought it was delightful. People absolutely loved this movie and I was just like, eh. So who knows? But uh, yeah, I really thought I was gonna love Clifford the Big Red Dog way more than I did. I watched a show that actually, um, the reason why we started watching it was because um, a few years back when Prime was starting to launch like their kids program, it might have been more than a few years. You guys, I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> they were doing this thing where they were testing out a bunch of different pilots. And so we watched the pilot of this show, but it was for their kids thing. And we didn't have like the kids, um, I forget what it was called back then, but now it's all part of Prime. So this was before, you know, the whole Prime thing. And anyway, so I guess this was a show that they eventually, you know, put on Prime and, um, it was cool to go back and like, oh, remember we saw that pilot? Let's just watch this show. And it was an animated series made for children. But um, I'm a big fan of all things Oz. So I very much enjoyed Lost in Oz. Even for the fact that it is a kid's program, it was pretty good. Um, let's see here. One thing that we watched for a while on Hulu um it was I think it was a limited series so I don't think there's going to be more of it in that time um but we watched a series called Broken Bread and it's basically talking about food culture in America and the good and the bad and all this kind of stuff where it's going and everything and that was just a really wonderful series um uh, I am not hating on what is his name Chef David Chang Chan I'm not hating on him at all, but I do find that a lot of his documentaries um, about like food culture tend to kind of bring you down. Whereas this one, even though it was very honest and gritty and it had like some low points, I feel like overall you kind of leave with, a, with this feeling of optimism that maybe things won't be perfect, but they can get better. And I feel like when I watch a David Chan, and I know I'm saying his name wrong, I should have looked this up. I'm going to look it up and put the correct name on the screen. But whenever I watch one of his documentaries about food culture, I just feel like we're all going down and it's just a terrible feeling. Um, but not, I mean, not that he's not wrong, but it's just nice to watch a documentary where you don't feel like the world is ending at the end. Um, all right. So now I'm going to move on to my, my two big, my big streaming ones for me anyway, are Disney plus and Netflix. I'm going to start with Netflix and I'm just going to go through a list of kind of some things that I watched and maybe give you some feedback. Um, School of Good and Evil, better than I expected it to be. I did not have high expectations for it, not for any particular reason. But I mean, come on. It's a movie adaptation based off of a book. Um, and it's it's just historically speaking, I feel like movie adaptations based off books are just not good. <laughs> They're not terrible, but they're not good. And so this one was, like I said, was better than I expected it to be. Did it blow my mind? Absolutely not. Was it entertaining? Yeah, it was a good way to spend some time. Um, Pan. This movie came out, I don't know when, but I am so glad I missed it when it originally came out. And I'm kind of mad at myself for actually watching it. Like, I wish I had just taken like a few minutes to do some research on it before watching it. And that's on me because... I am a fan of most things Neverland. I just assumed this would be, you know, hey, here's a, a, you know, a movie about Neverland that I somehow missed. Let me watch that. I wish someone had slapped me in my face and said, don't do it. I did not like this movie for a number of reasons, but I just, I am just like, I am still processing how much I didn't like that movie. And I'm just like, why, why did this happen? I just don't know um but that was on Netflix I don't know if it still is but I was just like <laughs> I know I'm not really explaining the hor horrifying experience that I had but look it up for yourself um 
I did watch a little thing called Night Books. Um, Kristen Ritter was in that. So I was like, oh, let me check that out. And it was actually, um, I, I want to say cute, but it's basically, you know, kids horror. So kind of like goosebumps kind of stuff. Um, I liked it. Um, the way that it ended, I think they were planning on doing more. But, you know, the way Netflix works, if a, a billion people don't love it, you, they don't do more with it. So it's it's like, if, you know, 999 million people liked it, that's not enough. It needs to be a billion but I thought it was cute. Um, I liked the premise. Let's see here. I watched the show Kaleidoscope that everybody was kind of like ooing and awing about because I guess the, it, the, it it had it played in a different order for everyone based upon like how you watched it or whatever. Um, I mean, I guess that was interesting to know that you could watch it in different order and that, but you were going to get the same outcome no matter what. I don't I don't know. Um, don't get me wrong. I I liked the show. It was it was good. I just didn't understand the whole appeal that this draw of ooh you can watch it in different order and stuff. I'm like, does it really matter? I mean, I guess sometimes it does. I know people will some back and go back and watch movie series like in chronological order versus release order and stuff like that. So I get it. I guess. I just don't think that that hype for me is what was appealing about it. The show itself was appealing. It had complex characters, a good story. Um, yeah, so I, I liked Kaleidoscope. Yeah, um, if you like heist things, definitely check that out. Let's see here. Oh, Shadow and Bone season one and two. Of course, I was late to the game on season one. I did that on purpose because it was one of those things where, you know, if you don't, jump on the bandwagon right, right away um you you just kind of miss it and you know it's going to be like a spoiler or whatever and so I waited until I heard that there was going to be a second season I'm like this is my opportunity so I did I watched season one and two um very much enjoy it that's one of the series that um I got the books and so on my shelf never read it <laughs> so will I go back and read it one day I don't know sometimes I feel like I'm setting myself up for disappointment by doing that. Um, but not always, it just depends. But eat regardless, I do enjoy the show. Yeah, so I would say the thing that I am most enjoying, which I, I have one more episode to go on Netflix right now is a series called The Night Agent. Um, this is very much a Jason Bourne-esque kind of show with, you know, espionage and all that kind of stuff. So it's really good. I, um, it's not perfect, obviously, but I would say the main, not the main reason, there's lots of reasons why I like the show, but I would say the representation of female characters on this show just makes me so like giddy. I don't know. It's, I, I, I just, I can't explain it. It's, I'm going to try to explain it. So um, we have a situation where we're in this, you know, uh, uh, kind of alternate modern reality where the president is a woman and she's strong and confident. And, you know, she, her, um, I can't remember if she's the chief of staff or I forget what the, her, the other powerful woman, you know, who's basically um, kind of the, one of the main characters of the show she's you know in in charge and she's you know smart and vicious and just like she's the person that you're afraid of in the room you know and then even the so-called damsel is just a excuse my language a badass because she is there have been so many times cliches throughout history where you have this damsel character who just sits around waiting for the guy to like save her and to a certain degree she does that because that's realistic if you don't have military espionage training you're not and that's the thing I think that bothers me is that Hollywood seems to think that there's no balance you're either some super ninja woman or you're just an absolute dingus who can't do anything for yourself and I'm like there's women who fit somewhere in between that and I feel like this show represents that really well like this character knows her limitations she's not trying to you know kung fu people because she doesn't have those skills but she's also not sitting around waiting for somebody to save her there are several times where she like steps up and does something you're just like whoa that's the girl I want on my side even though she's the one that everyone is trying to save I'm trying really hard not to give spoilers here but I really like this show um 
if you you know aren't into like spy thrillers and stuff like that then it may not appeal to you but this is just I think at its core a really good modern day like spy thriller also like it's really good and the extra you know icing on the cake is the representation of women in the story I mean we have women playing heroes we have women playing villains we have smart women um it's just and and again <laughs> Just to, for those of you who don't know about the show, the main character of the show is a man. There is a man in the hero role who's going out there. He is the night agent. So I want to be clear about that. People seem to think that you can't have powerful, strong, intelligent women in stories where the man is the hero without diminishing the man. No, he's awesome. He's great. Everybody that they put in this are serving the roles that they should be serving very well. The villains are the villains that you love to hate. The heroes are the heroes without being cliche, without being overly masculine or overly feminine to the point of fault. Now, like I said, the show isn't perfect, but for me, I'm all about it. All right, so now let's move on to Disney+. Plus. Here, again, not going to mention everything that I've been watching. Um, I did go back and watch um Wakanda Forever um, in preparation for the Ant-Man and Wasp movie so I did that um I don't really have a whole lot to say about that it's just it's a good movie people have different opinions about Oscars and stuff like that I personally don't care about the Oscars I haven't for years so I'm not going to be making any comments about that really I mean I've just said the word so whatever your thoughts or opinion about that is good for you I didn't watch it for me it was really you know seeing Chadwick Boseman kind of like you know the way he's represented the movie like in memory and stuff was was interesting you know seeing that all again before going into um the ant-man and wasp just said well, you know why not outside of that um i am currently watching um whatever the current season of bad batch is i forget i want to say it's season two but i gotta pay more attention to stuff so i'm watching bad batch season two really enjoying it Mainly because I like what they're doing with the character of Omega. <sighs> she is one of those female characters who drove me flipping nuts during the first season. <laughs> I mean, I got it that we were supposed to like save the kid and all this kind of stuff. But she was just, for me, really annoying in season one. I am really liking her in season two. I'm also watching Mandalorian season three. Um, what's not to love about the Mandalorian? I mean, um, Grogu is great. He's a bad baby. <laughs> so, but the reason why I was inspired to finally do one of these videos after months is because of my new jam right now. I'm going to just give you a little bit of background real quick. So most of you are, you know, maybe not be into like animation the way that I am clearly and that's fine. Um, I have always had this thing when it comes to like these superhero movies and everything that when it comes to live action, Marvel is king, but when it comes to animation, DC is king. And that's just the truth. I mean, if you know any geeks in your life, ask them, they will tell you. <laughs> um, however, Marvel has been doing something that DC hasn't, at least not, that, not as, as I've really noticed it. They've been trying some things, pushing some boundaries. I think we all saw it in the Spideyverse movie with Miles Morales and what they were able to do visually with that. And as far as the story that they told with that, the way they incorporated music and culture and all this kind of stuff, it was just, it was amazing. It's like, I wish Marvel would do more of that. Didn't see a lot of that for a long time. DC remains king in the area of, you know, superhero animation. At until now, at least for me, um, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur is my new jam for multiple reasons. But stylistically, what they're doing with this animation is very similar to what they did with Spider Verse, but it's not the same. If that makes any sense, like they are doing some things, they are incorporating music and culture in ways that I'm just like, yes, I am all for this. Um, the story that they're telling, the way that they're telling it, it's just, I am really enjoying this. My husband is even like, I know this is a kid show, but this is, I love the show. And we've just been really enjoying it. And um, I hope they continue 
doing things like this. So Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur is my jam right now. Um, I love the fact that um, the dinosaur, even though he doesn't really speak, has a lot of personality. He's not just a prop. And um, he, in some regards, he's, so, you know, with superheroes, they have, you know, their superhero um, persona and then who they are in real life. And so Moon Girl is who she is in real life. And then she's also Moon Girl. And so in this um, regard, he does kind of like play the role of her pet, but he's also her sidekick and her protector. And so, um, and I don't even know if sidekick is, is accurate. I think the only reason he would be relegated to the role of sidekick is just because he does not speak. He only speaks to her. She's the only one who understands him. But um, it's an opportunity for her to have a responsibility. Like she literally has to like take care of him. And so you see this young black woman and she's 13 going through all of these different things where she's making mistakes and learning from them. And it's just, it's very refreshing, I feel. And, and some of the things that they are, you know, the content, the things that they're talking about are very relevant to what's happening now, like in the world, things that kids are dealing with, things that families are dealing with. And I don't know, I just really, really enjoy the show. It is the reason why I decided to finally record one of these videos after months. So have you seen Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur? You, you need to see it if you haven't. Um, obviously, if you're not into animation, don't watch it and then complain about it being a cartoon. Don't do that to yourself don't do that to the rest of us but if you are open if you did see spidey verse and you liked that experience then you got to give this a try the soundtrack to this show is just phenomenal the voice work the people who are voicing these characters i'm just like what is that who i thought that was it's um just visually stunning um the comedic timing is great um it's just I like it. It's my new jam. And that's considering the fact that I am watching Bad Batch and Mandalorian right now. Don't get me wrong. I love those shows too, but this is my jam right now. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaurs. So what have you guys been watching? I know it's been months since I did this last one. So I'm, I'm okay with you telling me some things that might be considered old now. I think if something is more than a week old, it's old now. You can share that with me. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I just wanted to let you know what I've been watching. And what I know is, have you seen this? So until next time, guys, stay safe and be blessed. <laughs> Psst, hey, if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and also leave me a comment. I would love that. Okay.